Ya, tanda betul. Terima kasih. P13. Kita go to a point. Yang uh, saya maksud mengenai lawatan uh, Perdana Menteri kita ke uh, United States dan uh, soalan yang kita perlu uh, tanya dengan izin. Apa yang kita dapat, apa faedah Malaysia kita dapat daripada lawatan Perdana Menteri kepada uh, United States? Dan uh, apa yang apa yang lihat apa yang lihat apa uh, uh, faedah ialah uh, pertemuan Perdana Menteri dengan uh, US, uh, Presiden Obama selama 40 minit sahaja dan tidak ada lain dan pun ada pertemuan dengan pegawai-pegawai uh, US yang lain dan uh, memang ini nampaknya the most direct uh, uh, benefit in terms of a photo opportunity and image projection at home in Malaysia itu sahaja apa yang kita dapati daripada uh, lawatan yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri kepada uh, 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 US di in Washington uh, Post hari ini adalah satu laporan uh, a nuclear summit Obama seeks global help in sanctioning Iran di mana adalah satu peringan dengan izin Obama also met Monday with Prime Minister Najib Razak of Malaysia as a condition for Najib attending the summit the Obama administration demanded that the Malaysian government adopt stricter import and export controls to prevent the country from being used as a transshipment point for smuggling nuclear materials and technology officials said kita harap bahawa yang berhormat timbalan menteri boleh memberi apa apa yang sebenarnya Uh, 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 kedudukan bagaimana seorang satu sovereign country sebagai Malaysia bolehlah uh, uh, di, uh, uh, bertunduk uh, begi, begitu sehingga uh, untuk mendapat satu pertemuan dengan Presiden US perlulah buat compromise dan compromise sehingga berlaku nampaknya pertukaran dasar ekonomi uh, luar negeri termasuk kita nampaknya Tukar pun daripada pendirian-pendirian NAM dan OIC. Dan di sini, saya didapati bahawa beberapa isu ada dibincang sebelum lawatan ini dipersetujui. Antara lain, caning dengan izin. Caning. The settlement of the caning issue. Kita tahulah caning issue. Katika. Katika. Caning issue was crucial and done earlier via diplomatic channels after the US have pulled up Putrajaya sharply. Adakah benar? Saya harap bahawa kita ada lah satu uh, penjelasan. Trafficking issue. The trafficking issue statement which was raised in the Senate was also crucial. Dan lagi, mengenai the joining of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Inilah satu perintirafan, de facto. A recognition de facto that an FTA, free trade agreement, could not happen. But the Malaysians are staying at the table. I, inilah informan saya. I understand that JJ is pushing for a mutual investment agreement. But this is not going to actually benefit much. Adakah ini benar? Apa yang uh, 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 jawapan dan the, the Iran issue. Iran issue ialah was from the US side of crucial importance. It would appear that Malaysia will allow some checks on the flow of capital from there. This was crucial for the US. This could impact on Petronas. Benarkah? Agreement to work with the new Obama non-proliferation framework. In short, to get a personal meeting. The Malaysians delivered their own many fronts. What is apa yang kita untung daripada pertemuan dan lawatan yang amat berhormat Perdana Menteri kepada uh, US. Dan nampak ni pattern. Pattern di mana kita perlu bayar untuk akses. Untuk jumpa Presiden US teruskan. 8 tahun dahulu perlulah menggunakan Jack Abramoff dan uh, lobby yang bayar 4.6 juta ringgit. Sekarang supaya Perdana Menteri kita berjumpa dengan uh, Presiden US nampaknya perlulah engage Epco bayar 70 juta 70 juta 77 juta ringgit dan apabila ada di Washington Perdana Menteri ada memberi satu ucapan yang penting satu ucapan yang penting di uh, dan dianjurkan oleh Center for Strategic and International Studies yang nama US Malaysia Relations looking ahead at key pillars of cooperation dan itulah uh, satu uh, Kesimpulan seorang yang ada menghadiri Menghadiri uh, seminar itu Dan ada mendengari ucapan Dan dengan izin I am left and overwhelmed by This oration There is nothing about vision 
or even a coherent theme. It is essentially a rehash of recent pronouncements and a repetition of slogans, many of which are either stale or hardly of interest to an audience in Washington, D.C. In the first part, the so-called international part is largely silent about the issue of the global economy, something that should be of concern to a small open economy such as Malaysia. There is nothing about global financial re-engineering that is needed. He could have easily made mention of the G20 and how it is attempting to bring about a transition to a more equitable global system of economic governance. What role does Malaysia wish to play? What does it propose to contribute? He could have taken the, rec, the high road by wishing to call for an open trading environment and to urge that the big powers do not slip towards protectionism. While lamenting the failure to agree on the FTA, what alternatives are there? What does Malaysia seek? How will it move forward? Mahathir would have used this occasion to bash the West, to catch the headlines for the wrong reasons. Najib should have attempted a very different approach by being bold in arguing the case for reform, both globally and domestically. The second part of the speech is rather wishy-washy. All those abbreviations are fine, but where is the substance? Where is the substance? What are the means that will be employed to get to the goals and to escape the middle income trap? He missed an opportunity to elaborate on a whole slew of issues and failed to address the skeptics. No attempt was made to counter the bad press Malaysia enjoys as regards human rights, the breakdown in the rule of law, the perverted judicial system, and the increasing intolerance. He did not attempt even in a modest way to assert that Malaysia aspires to remain a moderate Islamic state, contrary to what the international media project. He could have mentioned the interfaith dialogue that is planned. This is not the speech of a reformer or a visionary leader. It is a, more the speech of a bureaucrat who is somewhat lost and is fumbling after a year in office. Alas, alas, APCO has failed him by not guiding him to speak about issues that are high on the list of friends of Malaysia. Itulah. Nampaknya sebab itu saya tak tahu. Saya harap yang berhormat Tuan Menteri boleh berita sama ada the ridiculous, the laughable launching of the caucus US Malaysia Congressional uh, Caucus other the other kan atau other the postpone yang yang kita uh, nasihat di sini. Kalau tidak ini lagi satu crown jewel of a trick of a ridicule yang kita beri uh, uh, makna atau tabat atau uh, dignity kepada negara kita. Saya harap hal perkara ini bolehlah dapat jawapannya Bro Ahmad Menteri. Terima kasih.